Yes? Does Gaussians have, is it, are there two S's? Because I've seen this spelled both ways. It is, all it is valid both ways. You want to know what else? <laughs> Fishes is a valid word too. <laughs> also valid both ways. <laughs> so, wait, so soda makers like you know those like homemade machines that you mm -hmm. buy and like they just put pressure into the water. Yes. <laughs> As usual, Rome and I are on the same channel. Um, good segue. Rome asked about like the soda streams where they just put carbon dioxide in the water. That's what they do. Um, I grew up, when I was your age, I worked at two burger joints. And both of these burger joints, if you, if you work at burger joints now, good, good on you. Um, they, uh, they have these big silver tanks that stand about this big and they get delivered by a guy in a truck once a week. And what happens is they connect the big tank, it's basically a CO2 cartridge like you'd use in your paintball gun. It's a CO2 cartridge and all it does is it pumps carbonation, pumps carbonated, pumps carbon dioxide. Pumps carbon dioxide into water to make carbonated water. And then when you go to the In-N-Out Burger and you get your drink, what you see is carbonated water with a little thing of syrup, Coke syrup. There isn't a gigantic bottle of Coca-Cola in the back. The way they sell you the Coke is they just, all they buy is um, CO2 and a box which contains a bag of Coke syrup. That's, they, they do. So, and then they just add the carbon dioxide to the water. Tap water. Yeah, you know like when the syrup is gone, it tastes like salt water? What you're tasting is carbonated water. And here's the crazy thing. Coca-Cola here tastes different than Coca-Cola in like Colorado Springs. Because the water is a lot cleaner with a lot less minerals. It hasn't traveled down, it hasn't, hasn't traveled a thousand miles of river yet. When it gets to us, it's got lots of minerals in it. So Coca-Cola here tastes different than Coca-Cola from a 7-Eleven in Colorado. Like in restaurants, not the cans, right? Or are you talking about the cans too? Cans too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Why does Coca-Cola at McDonald's taste different than Coca-Cola at, like, Burger King? Because the Coca-Cola at McDonald's, they take the water out of the toilet in the McDonald's and they add the carbon dioxide to it. Whereas Burger King, it comes right from the tap. Oh, right. Actually, yeah. <laughs> okay. But anyway, that's the point. That's how you make. That's how they make soda. They just pump carbon dioxide into tap water, and then they take a little bit of syrup, and they pump the little syrup into the or at the machine, and they put the little machine into the carbonated water. Same thing in a can. Carbonated water, and then in the syrup is high fructose corn syrup, caramel color, phosphoric acid, and natural colors. That's the syrup. All that goes into this is carb. Yeah. The Coca-Cola secret secret mystery uh, mystery mix. So that's how it works. Okay, we have some categories. When we're looking at a solution, we can categorize it three ways. It is saturated, it is super saturated, or it is unsaturated. A saturated solution has as much solute as it can hold. A saturated solution has as much solute as it can hold. If you add some more, it just falls to the bottom. Sort of. I'll qualify that sort of in the lab on Wednesday. We also use saturated when we're talking about fats. A saturated fat has as much as it can hold, but it's not a solute, it's chemical bonds. A saturated solution has as much solute as it can hold. A saturated fat has as many chemical bonds as it can hold. But we're not going to do organic chemistry, so that's as close as you're going to get to organic chemistry. But saturated means as much as you can hold. Yeah? How are vitamins able to dissolve into fat? Because there's fat-soluble vitamins and then there's water-soluble. The compounds aren't very polar. So non-polar. Okay. Okay. An unsaturated solution can hold some more. An unsaturated solution can hold some more.
the Gatorade and the vitamin water, these are unsaturated solutions of sugar and water. Because if they were saturated solutions, yeah, they would have the consistency of maple syrup. Or the syrup that goes into the Coca-Cola. Okay, that syrup that comes out of the bag in the box in the back of the machine, that syrup is actually a saturated solution of sugar water. They want to make it as saturated as possible so that it's to save on shipping. They don't want to ship you water. So Gatorade, this is an unsaturated solution. A saturated solution would have the consistency of maple syrup. It'd be pretty gross. Yes? How does that apply to like saturated and unsaturated fat? A saturated fat has as many chemical bonds as it can hold. An unsaturated fat has enough double and triple bonds that it can still hold more bonds. Yeah? So, there's like saturation and all that. Is that how the government turns all the frogs gay? <laughs> yeah, the water's turning the frogs gay. You know? <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> super saturated means there is so much that there is actually more than it can hold, and that's where things start falling out. A super saturated solution starts pushing the solute out of solution because it's got more than it can hold. <clears throat> if you have a super saturated solution of, of uh, Gatorade or, or anything, Kool-Aid, then you can actually feel like, oh, there's crystals coming out. Oh, gross. Sugar crystals are coming out. Because that would be a super saturated solution. So here, my dad makes Kool-Aid saturated and then super saturated. That's also how they make rock candy. They make a solution, like a, a gooey solution of sugar water, and then they add flavoring to it, and then they allow the super saturated solution to cool down. And as you, the temperature comes down, the saturation point comes down, so the compound becomes super saturated, and crystals start forming. Then they cut them into little squares, wrap them up, and call them Jolly Ranchers. That's how they make candy. Make a super saturated solution of sugar water. OK, moving on. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to move on. Uh, of those who are paying attention, we'll take it. OK. Soda pop. Before opening your can, before you, psh, with respect to the gas, not the sugar water, because it's going to be unsaturated solution for, a water, for sugar water forever. So with respect to the carbon dioxide that's dissolved in water, before you pop it open, is it saturated, unsaturated, or super saturated? Super saturated. Super saturated. Because when you pop it open, what happens? It the gas escapes. The gas doesn't want to be in there. There's more gas than wants to be in there. So you pop it open because it's super saturated and the gas escapes. Now, after you popped it open, now, so you pop it open a minute later, is the gas in the water saturated, super saturated, or unsaturated? The water? The gas in the water. It's still super saturated because the gas keeps coming out. Okay, it's still super saturated. Now, once it goes flat, then it's only what? Saturated or unsaturated, depending on the temperature. So, before you open it, it's super saturated with carbon dioxide. After you open it, it's super saturated. Once it goes flat, then it's only saturated or unsaturated. Question. <coughs> Yes, the bubbles that are coming out are the carbon dioxide. They're like, they're the solute. They're like, we're out of here because we finally have a place to go. <laughs> okay, we talked about how fountain soda. So, anyone have any questions about how fountain soda is made before we move on to the last thing today? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, that's called a soda fountain. A soda fountain used to be a, a, a like a bar for kids. You know, it's like belly up to the bar where they get they get soda. They get, but now they don't do that anymore. Yeah, the guy who gave you the soda was called the jerk. All the grown -ups did was Not making that up, ball. soda jerk. Okay. Like, hey, soda. We classify solutions or we classify mixtures as one of three things. It's either a solution, a suspension, or a colloid. A solution is particles that are so small they have dissolved, which is everything we've been talking about so far. 
A suspension are, is a mixture where the particles are so big they don't settle out. Big, big particles. They don't settle out, they create phases. River water is a suspension, it settles out. Italian salad dressing is a suspension, it settles out. The particles are too big to dissolve, so they settle out. If you leave your Italian salad dressing in your fridge for a couple days, it settles into layers. Or French, or vinaigrette, they settle out. Uh huh. It's yeah, usually French red. Eat Fair enough. All they eat are baguettes, you know. Baguettes and butter. Baguettes they just and butter. their lunch is just like for for breakfast they have a baguette and for lunch is butter. Yeah. It's just a giant tub of butter. Bread, and yeah. Butter everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> their diet is baguettes, butter, and shame. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Don't they eat those hats? <laughs> yes, they eat the hats too. Okay. <laughs> colloids are solution guys, colloids are mixtures where the particles are too small to form to settle out, but too big to dissolve. They're too small to settle out, but they're too big to dissolve. They're right in between solutions and suspensions. They're right in the middle. Yeah, they're right in the middle. And they're actually the most interesting things. Um, but because you only have to learn certain things, you don't actually have to learn what the colloids are. There are actually seven different types of colloids. Gel is a colloid. Smoke is a colloid. What? Yeah, smoke is a colloid. Um, yeah. So colloids have two phases. They have special names. The solute is called the dispersed phase and the solvent is called the dispersing medium. Yes? I just want to put this out. Colloids sound like a disease, don't they? Colloids. If you say so. You have colloids, like... I can see that, like you have colloids, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, shoot. Yep, gels are colloids. <laughs> Jello's a colloid. So fire your laser through Jello and you should actually see the beam in the, uh, in the laser, in the, the, the Jello. So let's see about the... Now I can't see the beam in my vitamin water, so that's a solution. Let's see if I can see it through the Gatorade. Oh yeah, Gatorade is a suspension. The particles here, are, maybe, maybe this is the container. It's probably the container. Um, but uh, the laser won't go through the suspension. And if you shine it through here, you can actually, you know, my laser is kind of weak, but you can actually see the beam travel through a colloid. I saw through the, the yellow and the orange one. Yeah, the beam just gets stopped in the, in the suspension. I need to put new batteries in here. But in a colloid, you can actually see the beam. Maybe I, I just need a new laser. Yeah. Anyway, let's take, take a look through the Boulder City water. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, Boulder City water. Can you see the laser in there? Yes. It's a colloid. The minerals have crystallized to the point where you can actually see them. Mm, that's some... Uh high quality H2O. <laughs> exactly, there we go. I'm holding the button down because I don't want to lose the beam. But if you can see the beam through the, the mixture, then it's a colloid. That's called the Tyndall effect. This dude with this epic beard came up with something called the Tyndall effect. There's John Tyndall. He found that if you, wanted, if you want to separate solutions from colloids, if you can see the light bouncing through the particles, then that's a colloid. If you can't see the light through the, co the particles, then it's just a solution, like my vitamin water. Yeah. Can't see, I can't see the beam through uh, my lab water. I can see it through Boulder City water. <laughs> so, when you're trying to figure out if it's a colloid or a suspension or solution, here's what you need to ask. How big are the particles? If the particles are really big and they're so big that they settle out, what is it? Suspension. Suspension. 
If the particles are so small, they dissolve, then what is it? Solution. Solution. And if they're right there in the middle where they're too big to settle out, but they won't dissolve, it's a Colloid. colloid. Okay. So the Tyndall effect tells us all about that. And if it's a French, if it's a French piece of bread, then it's a baguette. Baguette. <coughs> and if they wear it on their head, then it's a it's a croissant beret. Bre it's a beret croissant. It's a croissant beret. Oh, I have these like Jimmy Dean biscuits that I eat for breakfast, and, but like instead of like a biscuit bread, it's like a croissant. And like it's a croissant, and like in between is a sausage and cheese and stuff. It's really good. 